Um, we are doing our advocate informational and educational training meeting, and we're excited you guys are on. Thank you, thank you, thank you for taking out time of your very busy schedule. Um, I know it is a crucial time of year for a lot of us, but hopefully you've got your Thursday night activities done, and you're just relaxing, and you've got your forms in front of you, and you're all good to go. So um, y'all know this is Constance Meredith. She is our Chief Programs Officer for um, Where Hope Lives at the Dream Phoenix Dream Center. No, for the Phoenix Dream Center. She pretty much runs everything Where Hope Lives. Now, we're going to start out by saying this, because this is how we're going to start all of our training from now on, whether you're coming to volunteer training or advocate training. I am your point of contact. <laughs> Do not bother her. <laughs> I know some of y'all have her phone number, you have her email and all that. Start with me. And if I, I will know in the first 30 seconds if I can help you or not. If I can't, then I call Constance and we talk through it. But she is like doing the job of 10 people right now. And, um, and yes, yeah, she is very well compensated. Kind of like one of those new uh, major league picture, pitchers. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> She's not. So I just want to let you guys know that um, don't feel like you can't approach her or say hello or whatever. But remember, I'm always your initial point of contact. And I will always answer you as quickly as I can, especially if you text me. If you text me and I'm in the mountains of Pennsylvania, which I'm so excited that at Christmas this year I get to go to the very warm region of middle Pennsylvania and New Jersey. Um, if I don't have reception there because they still have dial up, um, then I will, I can text you back and let you know what's going on. So we're going to go through a presentation with you guys. Um, if you have questions as we go along, just go into the zoom group chat and type it and I'll try to keep up with that. But um, Constance is going to take it away so we can kind of cover the material and then we'll do general questions for everybody at the end. Thumbs up. Give me a big thumbs up. Everybody's good to go? Okay, I'm assuming that Deb and Stephanie just stuck their thumbs up, although we can't see them. Okay, Constance, take it away. All right, guys. Can everybody hear me? Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Let me just get started over here. So we're just gonna kind of go over this. I'm gonna go through it if I need to. I mean, like Joanna, you're gonna have to stop me because I can't see the message bar why I'm doing the PowerPoint presentation. So um, we're just gonna kind of go through some of the, the good stuff that we get to and put it all in like this PowerPoint presentation for all of you guys. I talk a lot with my hands, so if you don't see my hands and you see me moving, it's because, yeah, that's what I'm used to. So <clears throat> Joanna and I have been here for quite some time. I know some of you guys, but we're gonna go over some of the basics that we really, really need to know um, uh, with the new volunteer orientation. We're gonna go over the care team, which is like, who do you report to? Who's on your team? Um, expectations, agree to meet between resident, the agreement between a resident and advocate. We're gonna go over trauma and crisis. What does trauma informed care look like? How do you best come alongside your resident? Uh, boundaries, what do you do, what to do, what not to do? Um, goal setting, what's appropriate goal setting based on time and program. Um, healthy relationships like testimonies, personal family. Um, resident with children, what is different about a resident that has a child versus a resident that doesn't have a child. Um, review, do and then we're gonna go over some documentation too. The first thing that we're gonna go over guys is the care team. So the care team is everyone is a part of the team, as, uh, as everyone is a part of a care team for the residents. Um, communication and trust is a very is a necessity component of the care team. So as Joanna just said, like a communication, like with via text, phone call, email, this is super uber important. And the reason why it's so important is because you want to be able to talk with your your person. If there's something that you have a question about, and there's something that comes up, and you're like, oh, well, I don't think that that's a big deal. Always ask just to make sure. I always say that like whenever you're communicating with your resident, sometimes like um, your resident will give you information that may not be completely true. So we wanna make sure that you guys are all in so that we're all communicating, collaborating together. Um, expectations. 
So when you come on property, one of the oh, policies and procedures and dress code. So one of the things when you come on property, the dress code is super important. You need to make sure that you're wear, not wearing spaghetti straps, your bra's not showing, you're not showing your cleavage, you're not wearing short shorts. So from the top up, it looks like there's no midriff, there's no razorbacks, um, and no cleavage showing. We have to remember that we have men on property. And the men on property, we need to be respectful to them and not give them any kind of distractions. So, um, and then from the bottom down, if you're going to wear shorts or you're going to wear skirts, make sure that you're wearing them down to your knees. And if you're going to wear a dress, we are on the fourth floor. You have to wear some shorts up underneath it because if the windy day comes and it's happened several times, then goes all your goodies. So we don't want that to happen. <laughs> Um, emergencies um, or consi consistency is super important if you're one of the things that girls know is that if they're if you are their advocate or they know that you're coming and you don't come it like they look forward to that time like they look forward to that time all week long that's a time that they get to be able to see somebody that's exciting that's not somebody that they're seeing on an everyday basis so they're really excited about it so consistency is super uber important um, emergencies happen there are, has been situations where um, like their counseling ran late or something came up and somebody like somebody had to go to the urgent care and we had to pull somebody to be able to go with them for accountability. So sometimes those happen. Um, uh, we will try our best to be able to communicate those with you guys so that nothing, um, so that there's no um, disruption in your guys' visitations. Um, cancellations, we like to have them 24 hours in advance. We absolutely, absolutely know that emergencies and situations happen. But as soon as you guys know that you're not gonna be able to come or you're not gonna be able to make it with your scheduled advocate or mentee, please let us know or let Joanna know as soon as possible so that um, we can let them know. I mean, they know that emergencies happen, but we just wanna make sure that we're communicating as much as possible. Um, commitment level. Um, we have had um, our advocates, it's, this is like a lifetime commitment, pretty much. I know that sounds really scary, but uh, when you start developing a relationship with these girls, like I did seven years ago, like when I first started, like every single person that I have come in contact with is like a life partner for me. Like I still talk to girls that I knew when I first came into working in this field and it's it's uber important like they love once you get to know them and they start and you start hanging out with them and pouring into them they're like your heart dude like that's just what you you develop that relationship and it's so important to know that you're making a difference in someone's life so um it's a one week uh it's a once a week commitment so what that means is like you're going to spend anywhere from two to three hours with your person once a week if you become an advocate so you'll you can do the, and you can do lots of things with them. We try to refrain from like always purchasing stuff for them because purchasing stuff on a day to day basis is not ex I mean on an every day every time basis that you see them is not ideal. Like we want them to build relationship with you, not see you as a person that's buying them a whole bunch of stuff. So um, we'll go on to the next one. I, think I just heard a doorbell, Joanna. I got it. Um, confidentiality is is also important. I know that you're going, there's no social media posts. I know that everybody always wants to take pictures of things that are going on. And the girls might say, hey, it's okay to take pictures, but it's not okay to take pictures. Um, some of our girls um, want to be out there as much as possible and on social media because it's like a big thing. But a lot of them are in danger or in active cases, testifying against traffickers that are gonna be getting anywhere from seven to a hundred and something years in prison. So please be careful with your social media posts. Don't mention names, don't mention, um, don't post their pictures unless like they're in a higher pillar and we'll go over all that. Um, but if they're, if they're newer and they're in between the pillars of like orientation, first or second pillar, they're, they are not allowed on social media and it is not safe for them to be on social media. I can't stress that enough. Um, no, I just said that no sharing names of identifying information about residents, even tattoos. I mean, like sometimes tattoos can be very, um, very descriptive. So if you're taking a picture of somebody and you're like, oh, their face is not in there. If they have a distinctive tattoo that's on there or a birthmark or something, that's definitely identifying. So let's not, let's keep those out off of there. Um, we are a faith-based program. Um, every single one of our staff members is Christian. Um, we all believe in that. We all believe uh, we're all believers, but we're not requiring our residents to be believers. So they, it's an evangelistic program. 
are, we're all of faith, but we're not quite, we don't require them to be a faith. We've had people that were Jewish. We've had people that were atheists. We've had people that were agnostic, all graduate our program, but we have never, um, but we don't force our beliefs on them. And we just ask the same of all the advocates. Don't force your beliefs on them. Let them, we just love them where they're at. Our jobs as advocates and leaders is to plant seeds and, and let God do the work. That's just what our beliefs are. Um, trauma and crisis. Any questions so far? Am I going too fast? Am I talking too fast? Yeah. Okay. So trauma and crisis. What does crisis look like? So today I was at work and crisis was literally all day long from the moment I got on off that elevator to the time that I walked out of those doors, it was all crisis. And what those sometimes their crisis is, is literally like somebody stole my toothpaste, but they're literally that mad. Like it's really like, it goes from here up to here and it takes some, it takes some time to be able to deescalate and solve the situation. And normally there's like an underlying issue of like what's going on. It's not about the toothpaste. It's not about the sour cream. It's about, what what they're dealing with at that time so um crisis can look like a lot of things crisis crisis can look like um suicidal ideations crisis can look like somebody that is um is is cutting um there's lots of different ways that crisis looks like um what we have to mention we have to remember is that their crisis they really believe that their crisis is a crisis but that does not mean that every situation is a crisis so we de-escalate the situation and we move forward um, we have, um, some signs of DTO. Does anybody know what DTO or DTS means? No. Okay. So DTO is danger to others and DTS is danger to self. So if they are ever, there are signs of DTO, which would be like danger to others would be like threatening behaviors, um, motioning toward like they're going to hit somebody or, um, something along those lines. Um, danger to self would be suicidal ideations. I'm going to jump off the fourth floor. I'm going to, um, I'm going to take my own life. Like, so if they're ever, um, if they are making comments like that or making comments about hurting somebody else, you have to notify somebody immediately. Um, we don't take that very lightly. We always want to make sure that we're providing the safest, safest environment possible for everyone. Um, there have been some times where we've had to call the crisis hotline or the police because um, not necessarily for danger to others, but for danger to self. Um, when you're coming from a place that's very traumatic and have had a lot of um, a lot of traumatic situations happen, it it puts you in a place where you're you're not okay for a while. Okay, so. Um, drug, drug recognition, I won't spend much time on that. I'll just tell you guys that you guys got to get familiar with um, some of the behaviors when somebody is on drugs. We don't have that many people sneaking drugs on property. We haven't had that in quite some time. Um, but please be know, please know like the difference um, when, what some of the signs are if somebody is high. Some of the biggest ones I would say for you guys to check out are like, I'm pretty sure everybody knows what it looks like when somebody has been drinking. Um, but as far as like um, if somebody's high on heroin or somebody's high on meth or fentanyl, those are the three biggest um, drugs that are out there right now. Um, fentanyl, heroin, and, um, and meth. So those are the big ones right now. Um, follow up after crisis. If we tell you guys, um, we keep you guys up to date whenever something's going on. We had an issue where one of the residents was off property because of some behavioral health issues and they were at a behavioral health hospital. We want to make sure that when they come back, we're not like asking them lots of questions about what's going on. Um, and that's just like for the advocates. If you guys want to ask us the questions, totally do that. But I mean, like we've already asked them those questions. So if we've asked them those questions, then if somebody else is asking them those questions too, then it just kind of feels like they're still getting beat up about a situation that they thought they were getting past. So I was trying to make sure that we're asking those questions to us and not to them if like it's a follow-up after crisis. Some boundaries. Some of our people do not like to be touched. We always ask permission. Um, and we don't walk into their rooms or their personal space. You can knock on their door and if they invite you in, you can definitely come in, but don't just knock on their door and walk in their room. It's an intrusion. It's their, it's their safe space. So we always want to ask. Um, and they're not going to be rude and be like, get the heck out or anything like that. But they're just going to feel like it was a little, they were a little violated if there wasn't permission giving. Um, if you decide to pray with somebody, you can always, um, um, you can always hold their hands, but always ask them if it's okay. I think Joanna's texting me. Oh no, she's not. Um, hugging. Uh, if you want to, 
<laughs> if you want to hug somebody, just ask. They, the girls love hugs. They all love hugs. But I mean, most of the time, they're the ones who walk up to me for the hug um, because they're like, I need a hug. But I mean, like, if, if I want to give somebody a hug, I'm like, hey, I'm like, can I give you a hug? And they're like, yeah, of course. But just always ask because not everybody likes to be touched. My love language is not touch. If I'm upset, I don't want anybody touching me. <laughs> so let's just be mindful of that. Um, up close and personal, please do not give out your personal information until like you have been, until you have started to build a relationship. Joanna will, um, um, Joanna will be able to, to help you guys gauge like where you're at with your resident or where your resident is at in the program and helping, helping to walk alongside of you of what's okay and what's not okay. So phone numbers, um, depends on the volunteer duty. So, I mean, like if you're an advocate, of course, they're going to have your phone number because you guys have to work out what time that they're going to be coming. Um, we, we would say, please do not let them know where you live until that's cleared with leadership. Um, don't give them family information. And I'm not saying this because they're criminals. I'm saying because of the fact that you really want to build a relationship. If you meet somebody, at a, if you go on a blind date with somebody, you're not going to give them all of this information. If you meet somebody um, uh, that you're starting to be friends with, you're not going to automatically give them all the information. It's called a relationship building, and that's what we want to focus on. Um, we don't want people talking about personal past sins, like talking about, oh my gosh, this one time when I got drunk, I remember I was, and we don't want to talk about that. We're Because then they start glorifying the life and glorifying like some of the things that they have been through too. Um, don't share anything with residents that you don't want the whole dream center to know. <laughs> that's a big one. Everybody, that's a telephone game. One person has to tell one person and that one person has to tell one person and that person has to tell one person. And before you know it, I mean, like you could have just gone outside for tea and you, by the time it got to, the, got to me, you went out with some gypsies and y'all did a whole bunch of drugs and somebody ended up in a trunk. So let's be careful the things that we're sharing with people. <laughs> um, manipulation is a learned behavior and has to slowly be unlearned. Um, our, a lot of our girls have gone through a manipulate or have been using manipulation to survive. It's something that they have, uh, they, they, they've learned that they have to do. So to think that, that somebody is, is purposely being manipu manipulative is not, is not correct. They're not. Did I freeze? No. Joanna? You no? did for a second. Okay. Now you're good. So to, okay. I, first, I stopped because I saw your face and you were all, I was like, okay. So uh, they're not purposely being manipulative and it has to be unlearned to be pulling them out with love and just helping them out and just being like, you know, like um, you bring it to us and then we all have like a conversation about what that looks like because it's, they've done it for like, are the average age for entering human trafficking is 14. A lot of our girls don't get to us until they're adults. So we have all of that time that you've learned the master of manipulation in order to survive. It just doesn't go away. It takes time. They have to unlearn the behavior. Um, it's very important for you guys also to find your own release. Um, whenever you're, because there's a, a such thing as called vicarious trauma. And that is like whenever somebody is sharing their, their stories and their life and the things that have happened with, to them with you, it kind of soaks up into you sometimes. And so we want you to make sure that you're having your own release, that you're talking to leaders, you're, um, uh, post meet, you're posting your meeting email. If there's, there's something that you're struggling with, you're checking in with Joanna. Um, you're talking with other caregivers to make sure that some of the things that you're feeling or some of the things that are going on are normal. It's very, very important for some of that self-care. Uh, I, I preach all the time to all my all people that you have to have some self-care. The line of work that we're in is not easy. Um, it is, it, it can be, it can be, it, my life, I love it, besides my kid and my dog, but uh, <laughs> it is amazing. I love what I do. Um, and I love the people I work with, but I also have to take care of myself too. And that means that I would like for all of you guys to do the same as well. Um, trust. Please remember that people make mistakes. Um, and it makes, and it's what you learn from those mistakes. We teach them that too. Like it's, a it's, it's that grace. Lots and lots of the, the mm. you froze. Hang on guys. Huh? You froze for a second. Keep going. You're good. 
Okay, so grace is, is super important. We have to make sure that we're giving them that grace. They're going to, they're going to make mistakes. They're going to, there might be times where your feelings get hurt. My feelings get hurt too, but I have to instill that grace in them and let them know like, hey, that wasn't okay. Like, I can't tell you how many times you don't, you guys won't get cussed out, but I can't tell you how many times I've gotten cussed out because I'm the consequence person. So whenever you're facing, you're giving somebody consequences, they're not necessarily happy with it, but it's about like extending that grace and being like, look, that's not a way to handle a situation. Like we have to sit down and talk about like how you could have, what you're going to take from this conversation and what you're going to learn from this conversation so that next time it doesn't happen. Um, or that you handle it better. Um, their truth is not always the truth. And that one is important as well. Um, because if they have truth in their mind of what's going on, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the whole truth. People are, people perceive things a little bit differently. Um, we had a lot of, situ we had a couple crisis situations today where girls were mad at each other and they wanted to leave because one of the girls was not being very nice to her and basically told her that she was going to push her off the balcony. And I'm like, okay, so that's not what she said, <laughs> but it took like, but in her mind, that's what happened. So we had to walk through that and then pull them in and have like a conversation. So just remember that when they tell you things, if you want to double check, always double check and just make sure and be like, Hey, like this just doesn't sound right to me, but is this the truth? So, um, to just a double check with your, with your leaders. Okay. Um, I just talked about the fact that we are a faith-based program. Um, so we do promote waiting till marriage before sex but we're also not dumb. <laughs> we know that there are going to be some people that are in relationships. So we also talk about, um, we also talk about if there are, I mean, all, a lot of, a lot of them always come to me and tell me like what they're doing. Um, because I don't pass judgment. Um, it's about like, what's going to help you, what's going to help you be healthy. If you're out there and you're having sex, which is it, which has happened before. Are you protecting yourself? Are you making sure that you're keeping yourself away from contracting in either an STI or STD? And are you protecting yourself so that you're not getting pregnant? Now, you know, you're not supposed to be having sex, but at the same time, I'm going to educate and try to help out in a way that in any way that I can to prevent things. Um, we do promote abstinence. Um, we do promote dating for the purpose of marriage. If you're not going to be marrying that dude or he, you're not, he's not on your train of thought for you to marry, what are you doing with him? Like, come on now. So we have a lot of those conversations. Um, some of them say like, I'm just talking to him because I'm bored. I'm like, color, do something else. You don't have to date a dude because you're bored. <laughs> so, and I say that to them all the time and they're like, shut up, Miss Constance. <laughs> Um, keep personal love stories private if it doesn't align with the faith faith based belief with with the faith based beliefs, which means like don't don't be going out and saying like and I don't think you guys would I'm just saying that you can't go around and be like okay well so last night I met this guy and he was such a great lover and he was amazing be, that we we can't do that we just can't do that I think that I'm gonna stop right there because Joanna is laughing at me so. <laughs> Um, be mindful, uh, drinking or eating popular food or beverage chain, um, in front of residents. Uh, it doesn't happen very often, but it could, it brings up a memory, especially like fast food brings up a lot of memories because if they see Taco Bell, it brings them to a time where they were at Taco Bell and they were with their trafficker or they were at Taco Bell and something else happened. But I think that's kind of anybody, anybody remembers something of, of the past whenever they see something. So just be mindful. Um, the residents are not on display for your own purpose. Love them like Jesus loved the apostles. We, the last thing that we want is for people to feel like the girls are a project or that the girls are, a, are like a science project, I guess you could say. Um, they're, you just got to love them. I mean, like if, if you're there just because so that you can say that you're working for a human trafficking relief program, then it's not the right reason. If you're there because you love people and you want to help people get to the next level, that's the reason. Um, and no giving money to residents. I don't have to, I think we all get that. I don't even think we have to go into detail about that part. Um, setting, 
we focus forward, we don't look in the rear view mirrors. We try to, we, whenever people tell me their stories, it's because they want to tell me their stories, not because I asked them. Um, it's, we focus on like their dreams. What do you want to do with your life? Where do you want to go with your life? Who's going to be on your path that you're going to want to go, uh, that you're, that you're going towards your life. Um, we promote their passions, encouraging the residents to dream again. That's my biggest thing. What do you want to be? Like now you have choices. You have choices to make in your life. You can be anything that you want to be what do you feel like doing? And I'm like, and if you think it's going to be stripper or dancer, get that off your table. <laughs> get that off. That's not what we're talking about. So, um, listen to the, listen to their dreams, you know, um, see if you can, we can come alongside them to help them achieve them. A lot of them have, uh, have great dreams, but they're realistic dreams. They're not anything that's not out. That's out there. I've never heard any of them say they want to be an astronaut or a rocket scientist. Like I hear, I want to be a nurse. A lot of nurses. I hear, I want to be a counselor. I hear, I want to be a teacher. I hear, um, I want to be an EMT. I hear, I want to be a pastor. I hear all of this stuff from all of the girls they are not out of reach goals. Um, and don't impose your own needs and desires onto the residents. If you see something that they're good at, you can tell them that they're good at it, but don't be like, oh, you should go into this field because that's where you should be at. Let, let's let them make the choices. A lot of people have made choices for them and this is time for them to start making them. So if they want to, then absolutely come right alongside them and help them out. Um, we went a little bit over this healthy relationships, unlearning old behaviors, um, but one of them was like the manipulation that we were talking about. Another one is not being truthful. Um, sometimes they're not truthful. Sometimes they, they, they're not truthful about little small things that really don't make a big, that aren't really a big deal. We had one of our girls because she was used to being in the streets. She came in and she was like, Oh, she's like, I was, um, I have to be sentenced here because, um, I was, I was charged with murder. And I'm like, no, you weren't. But it was like her trying to establish um, that she was tough because she didn't want anybody else messing with her. You know, so we walked through that. I mean, of course, we all knew it wasn't true um, because I ran her. I run everybody. So <laughs> I ran her background and it wasn't true. And so we just walked through that. Like, why do you feel that? Um, I know you don't feel like you're in a safe environment, but I mean, like, that's not something that you want to do because it's not going to help you make friends. The first thing that somebody sees is that, oh my gosh, that person's a liar, you know, and that's not something that you want to put out there when you're walking into a new program and meeting new people. Um, resident with children. So um, fostering a, a client's child. Um, if you're an advocate and you begin to foster the, the person's child, we have some people that have DCS involvement, um, which is not um, abnormal. Most of our girls that have, um, that have babies have had some kind of DCS involvement um, because of the level of abuse and things that had happened while they were pregnant. Um, not necessarily that they did, but... Uh, so if there, if you, there is a time where you're like a foster, um, you have your foster license and you're taking in one of the babies, you will no longer be their advocate. Now we're not saying that you should be coming in and, um, asking for babies because if that's the reason that you're here, this is the wrong place. Um, we've had some people that came in just specifically because they wanted to help adopt people's babies and foster children, their children that were in the Hope Wing. And that's not the case. We're all for reunification. We want those mommies to get the healing that they need in order to be back with their babies and be successful. Um, babysitting on, is okay on property, not off property. Um, you, can, you cannot take it to your child's, your client's child off property without the client. Um, we are mandated reporters. That is the worst time of my job is when I have to call DCS to make a report. Um, that's the hardest part of my job. I've had to call, I would probably say a handful of times, um, but once a child, once one of the residents has a child, that child is now my first priority over the resident. So I have to make sure that that child's okay. Um, we have safe families. Uh, which is awesome. Safe Families comes alongside of us if a girl is like feels like they're overwhelmed. Safe Families will come up. They're all li not licensed foster, but they all have been going through lots of hours and testing for them to be able to come alongside of them. So if a girl is getting a job and she's in limbo of daycare, they'll take the baby um, for a few days or maybe even a week, but they even host up to, I think, 60 days. Nobody's ever used 60 days, but they host up to 60 days. But sometimes it's a little overwhelming being a mommy, you know, so... Um, 
um, they'll just want to break for a couple of days. And so like a grandpa or grandma comes and meets them. They, um, they're like that. They're not grandma and grandpas, but they come and meet them and they just start developing relationships with them to give them respite for them to be able to breathe again or start work or start school. Um, Joanna, this is you. Yay! Okay, I'm not seeing any questions in our comments, so we're going to keep going right ahead because we really want to get you guys off by eight. So let me go to my docs. <clears throat> all right. So um, I hope y'all can see this. So this is, can y'all see this, Constance? No. Oh, because I didn't do screen share. Hang on. I have to break up. I know it takes a village to learn how to do this. Share. Share. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay. All right. So this is the advocate resident shared agreement. If you are already an advocate and you've never seen this before, don't worry about it. We just created it. These are the things that the resident will agree to and what the advocate will agree to. And the reason why we did this is because we really want there to be an, a, a shared agreement between the two of you so that there are some boundaries there. One of the things that um, I really think is important is, especially in the first few months you're working with your resident, that she call you Miss whatever. So Miss Elizabeth, Miss Lydia, Miss Mary Helen. Um, that establishes kind of a distance. It, and, and I know you're like, wait, we're supposed to be getting close to them. You have to have those boundaries um, because they are so excited about getting an advocate and they just they want a mom or a sister or a grandmom so bad so to have that little bit of distance is good because you can always get closer but if you come in and you're like right up against them and things start going south a little bit it's hard to say okay well now i'm gonna you know try to tell you right from wrong well wait a minute you know you were my best friend last week so the resident agrees to be respectful of appointments that have been scheduled and to give 24 hours notice if they need to cancel or postpone the date of the meeting they agree to follow the rules of where hope lives in dress conduct and speech that means if they go off campus they can't strip down to their tank top with their spaghetti straps and you know their or booty shorts yeah. Uh, their booty shorts. Um, they have to continue to stay in the dress. Um, they are not to make any requests in regard to finances or housing. And they are to understand that your their advocate is here to guide, mentor, and be nurturing in their journey. And again, I want to go back to what Constance said about we have to be careful about when the girls have a challenge or they get in trouble that we don't go back and us at them as well. Um, be very glad that we're doing this on video because I think I have the flu right now. But um, anyway, so we have to, you know, make sure that we don't go, well, I can't believe you did that. But you can say, well, what, what did you learn from this experience? And let her tell you. And we keep saying her, but we also mean the guys. Um, what did you learn from this experience? You know, it, what would you do differently if it ever happened again? You can ask those kind of questions. But, you know, I'm kind of a fusser sometimes, and I'll say, well, that was stupid. You know, why'd you do that? Well, I don't even know what triggered her that day. So I'm not her advocate, so it doesn't matter. But, you know, we have to be really careful about we don't want to be another source of fussing. We, we also don't want to coddle them, but we don't want to be, you know, like, oh, my gosh, you know, I, what were you thinking of? Um, and I laugh a lot. When I work with the girls, I just like, like, they'll say something and I'll go, okay, if you say so. And they kind of know, okay, the BS meter just went up. Okay, the advocate agrees to, again, be respectful of appointments that have been scheduled, give 24 hours notice if it has to be canceled or postponed to focus on the resident's journey and how to best walk alongside them through the progression in the pillar system. And one of our um, volunteers asked, what's the pillar system? Okay, that is part of new volunteer training. The pillar system is basically, they come in and they achieve all, they go through one, two, three, and four pillars. And at each pillar, based on their activity, their productivity, their hours and all that, they get to the next pillar and they have more privileges. Provide a safe listening ear while respecting the decisions of leadership in my resident's journey. I'm going to tell you what that means. What that means is 
you can be empathetic, but try not to say, oh, I can't believe they did that. Oh my gosh, that's not a very good rule. It's better to say, well, why do you think they have that rule in place? Well, I don't know. It's stupid. Well, let's, let's move beyond you. Why do you think for the general population, they have that rule or that guideline or that structure in place? And usually they come to the conclusion that, yeah, it's a pretty good rule. It's for safety purposes or security purposes, things like that. So in, in order to walk alongside them and be able to listen to them and yet don't give in to um, not really knowing what happened in the situation. I know Constance kind of covered this, but there's always his story, her story, and the truth lies somewhere in between. So just provide that safe listening ear. Now, at the end of every single one of your meetings, okay, I know this is like paperwork, you must submit a visit summary to me. I'm the lead advocate, okay? If that changes, we'll let you know. But it is vital, it is vital that I know what is going on, that you met with them, and I have a tracking board for that. Now, most of the time, I'm going to read your summary and go, looks good. I'll forward it to Constance just so she knows that you turned it in. She'll glance at it. She's like, looks good. If there are concerns, I send it on. I always forward it on to Constance. But I'm the person you send that to so I can kind of filter through it. And if there's something to come to Constance's or Jay Sean's attention, I'll say, please note the second paragraph. This looks like it's something we need to address. So you're not tattling to me. You're just reporting about what happened. And I gave y'all a copy of what that, what an example looks like and then what a blank one looks like. And if you can just print that off and every time you meet with your resident, just shoot that off to me within about the next, I like it within the next couple of hours, but within 24 hours, that's great. I really appreciate that. So we really need mutual respect and openness to communication at all times. Um, this is not something that can be bought or attained. It's what can be experienced and learned. Okay. This relationship is designed to support the resident, give them a sounding board in a safe and loving environment without judgment or chastising. Respect for where Hope Lives leadership decisions in regard to the resident must be upheld at all times. In other words, you got to have leadership's back. You really do. It's like they go to mom, mom doesn't say what they want. I'm going to go to dad, dad didn't say what they want. I'm going to go to grandma. Maybe there's an auntie somewhere, a neighbor. Okay, so we have to uphold <clears throat> what mom and dad say, and that's our leadership. If you or the advocate has a question in regards to a decision made by leadership, you are welcome to inquire on their behalf. And Basically, the situation will be answered to the best of our ability within the confines of security confidentiality. So we will give you as much information as can be given without breaking confidentiality or any security levels there. Okay. We want you to understand what's going on with your advocate. Yep. Um, again, you can read this yourself, but navigating through crisis or recovery can be challenging. Um, you're looking at over 20 girls living on the same floor. There's going to be conflict, disagreement, and joyous loving and celebration. And sometimes it's like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. It happens right then, just like sisters, just like sisters. Um, I love that we have 1 Corinthians 13, 1, and this is basically just, you know, the guidelines on how to love and then teaching them this on how to love. Okay, at the bottom of this form, it has um, the primary contact and all that. So what you would actually do is you would sign this. You would go over it with your advocate. She signs it or he signs it. And then you keep a copy, they keep a copy, and I have a copy. Okay? And that way everybody's got their copy. Okay? Now I'm going to actually go back to, let me stop our share. Yay, look at all of you. And just, I know I can't see Lydia or Deb or Stephanie, so y'all will have to, um, I'll unmute you guys, so if you have background noise, let me know, because you are unmuted now. But does anybody have a question so far? Just raise your hand and, okay, Miss Elizabeth, you're unmuted. Okay, Elizabeth. You're Elizabeth. muted, you muted everybody. No, I, I unmuted Elizabeth, but she. Um, My audio, can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so if I have um, 
a question about meeting my advocate at time or so, like a logistical thing, who do I go to? Me. You? So if I, for example, that my advocate is sick tomorrow, ba, 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 am I going through you to then, because um, Constance, you know I've been sort of contacting you to say what's happening, because she doesn't have a phone, so it's very difficult. Yeah. 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 So the, my first, I've been calling either Constance or Jay Sean, so I should be calling, texting or whatever the case yeah. may be, you, okay. correct? So yes, and Elizabeth, all of this changed in the last yeah. week. Okay. And it's just I don't want you to think you've done anything no, wrong. No, not at all. You, you had no instruction to follow. Constance and I came to the conclusion that the best thing for everyone to do, and I actually wrote it in my notes for you guys to know when we meet with the advocates afterwards, but I'll just tell everybody right now. When you schedule a visit with your resident, you just shoot me a text and say, this is Elizabeth, I'm meeting with Daphne, Saturday at 10 a.m. If something comes up, because um, I forward that to Jay Sean, if something comes up, then I let you know, oh my gosh, they have a big event, she won't even be there. Okay. Okay, and we kind of do it that way. But here is our ultimate goal, ladies, and I know some of y'all have crazy schedules. I know Lydia has a crazy schedule as a um, neonatal nurse, but if we could possibly get everybody to try to be consistent on the day and the time that they meet, that would be ideal. Yeah. Because then all you would do is, Elizabeth, let's say every Saturday morning at 10, you meet with Daphne. You shoot me a text on Thursday and Friday and say, just confirming for Saturday at 10. I send it to Jay Sean. Can you confirm with Daphne Saturday at 10? Got it. Yes, we're all good. Yeah. Yes, she'll be there. Go for it. Have fun. And, and the reason being, and the reason being is just because, and, and like she said, like nobody's done any, you did, have not done anything wrong, dude. Like we still love you. Um, it's, it's because of the fact that like, if I have, I, so, so far I have two advocates that are texting me. Could you imagine if I had advocates from that have with all the girls have advocates, I have like almost 30 something people texting me, you know, and I, and my, my plate is already so full. So I'm like, how can we simplify this to make it a better system so that you guys don't feel like you're being left out right. and that you guys feel like you're getting the responses, the, the abrupt responses or fast responses that you guys deserve and that you guys need for the time that you guys are putting in. And it is frustrating to call in the office and it goes into voicemail because they might be do, doing meals or meds or bed checks or whatever. So, you know, if, if you're like, Oh my gosh. So Elizabeth, I'll use you as an example. Um, you text me on Saturday morning at 10 15. I'm supposed to be there right now. My, I have a flat tire. Can you get a message to her? I will get a message to her. And you know, it is not going to be a perfect system because like Constance said, our goal, my goal was actually to have an advocate for everybody by now. But our goal is that by 2020, everybody's going to be covered. And I mean, lovingly with a blanket of, you know, pure uh, support. And mm -hmm. so that's why it's so important that we get you guys linked up during this, you know, really busy holiday season when everything's going on so that in January, we kind of have a set schedule. Okay, we know that so-and-so comes on Wednesday, so-and-so comes on Friday, so-and-so comes on Saturday. I ha I'll have a calendar in the office and if something changes, and let's say I call Deborah, Jay Sean's traveling right now. So I call Deborah and say, hey, Deborah, um, normally Elizabeth meets with Daphne on Friday at, at 4 o'clock. Um, she needs to change it to 10 o'clock on Saturday, put a note in Daphne's box, and put it on the calendar. Bam. We're done. It really, we've been pretty, it's been pretty good. But then I feel very bad because she's counting on me, and I haven't changed anything, but, like, she was sick, whatever. I feel like... Oh my gosh, did she get this message? So I'm texting everybody last minute. It's yeah. like, yeah. because I can't, I can't get to her. I'm waiting for her to get to me. Mm -hmm. So then I'm feeling terrible. I want to make sure she gets it. And of course I overdo because I just don't want to let her down. Well, you're yeah. sweet. And what y'all are hearing is you're hearing how passionate someone becomes when they start really bonding with, with their resident. And that's awesome. So, and she's got a tough one. <laughs> and she's got a tough one. So that's where, if you're like, 
did they get the message? Did they just shoot me at, oh, Elizabeth, you're muted. I can't hear you. Okay. So, <laughs> so basically, you know, if you need confirmation, just call me or text Got it. Me. Yeah. Call me or text me and, um, and I will get confirmation. I've got Jay Sean. I've got Deborah. I've got everybody. Perfect. Else. And if worse comes to worse, if you guys ever show up at the dream center and you're like, what happened? They went where? They went to the park? Okay, that's where we have a conversation with your resident yeah. because they are allowed to use the office phone. And this right. is part of what you guys are going to talk about in your agreement. You are allowed to use the office phone to say, I need to call my advocate and confirm or cancel or change the date of our meeting. When that happens, again, real quick, shoot me a speed text and say, we just changed our meeting. Everything's good. Everybody's in the know. Great. Right. Perfect. I'm going to be juggling these 30 people. <laughs> and so y'all should enjoy my hair now because it's probably all going to fall out from stress by March. <laughs> so, okay. All right. I'm going to go ahead and mute you, Elizabeth. Is there anyone else who has a question? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Miss Stewart. Hi. So I have a question. Um, I am excited about um, the program and I am um, okay with the commitment. Okay. Mm -hmm. But my question becomes, is there the opportunity for some flexibility with the time commitment? Yeah. So if I'm in a season, um, like I have six children. Um, and so if I'm in a season where <laughs> I know where, you know, it's, it's a, it's a busy couple months for us. Can I do biweekly if I know ahead of time and then, go weekly or you know whatever my schedule would dictate if i'm looking at it as a lifelong commitment because i would like that you know i would like to to see this go you know as long as it can go but i want to make sure that it's sustainable okay so so let me tell you the conversation i would have and and we'll just role play this with with constance knowing that sometimes it'll be every other week sometimes every week so Constance, I have this really super sharp woman. She, her heart is in the right place. She wants a lifelong commitment. She's got six kids. She obviously doesn't know what causes it, but she has six kids. That's supposed to be a joke, you guys. Okay. Ah, I was like, wait. All right. So, so here's the deal. Let's put her with someone who may not have as strong a need for an advocate. Maybe Danielle. Maybe one of maybe Ashley. Maybe one you know one of our graduates who. It's great to have somebody pop in every other week or maybe every week when they can that will have the maturity to understand that this person, you know, can't make that huge commitment. Yeah. Or we would team you up with somebody that does have um, some kind of support system that's already here too, like a family member, a, a positive supportive family member, because our advocates are filling in the gap for the supportive family member that's absent. Yeah. So if they do have somebody that is like a supportive family member that's here um, in, in Phoenix, then we would team you up with one of them. And, and they wouldn't have as much of that immediate need because they've got, they've got somebody nearby. Now, I do want y'all to understand that a lot of our residents have local family. That is not a positive support system for them. So they might say, oh, my auntie lives here. Or my grandmother lives here. Or my parents live. But if that that is not necessarily a positive support system for them that right. could have been the trigger that got them where they ended up at the dream center okay any other questions these are excellent questions you guys love excellent. them okay Shar, you're unmuted okay so um what about the i think we talked about this a little bit but what if um the two or three hours doesn't seem like enough so even okay. like the other day when i picked neosha She's like, oh, we can spend the whole day together. And so now I realize, no, I need to ask you guys if that's the truth yeah. or not. So, yeah. But, you want to um, take that, Constance? Like, if they want to, if you want to do an activity, like, let's say we're going to a park or we're going to the movies and then we're going to get our name. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't want y'all spending a lot of money on them because this is not supposed to be expensive. Right. right. You know, and so far, yeah, I get that. But uh, I, I don't know. I think in, in her case, so she's not from Phoenix. She kind of wanted to see a little bit of the area. Yeah, yeah. And it makes so me a few hours. Yeah. And as we were going through the PowerPoint, it said minimum commitment. 
right. is two to three hours. So if you, and normally they take, so there sometimes they can take day passes and day passes are usually on a Saturday or okay. on a Sunday. Saturday is usually from like 8 a.m. until 8 p.m. They can take a pass for, you know, we kind of, we're, we're way more flexible with advocates um, mm -hmm. just because we no, we've already, we've already background checked every single one of you. Um, we, <laughs> we've made sure that you are who you say you are. Um, and so that we know that you're good standing members in the community. So, um, we're a lot more lenient with our, with our advocates. So, and Yosha is so excited about your guys's relationship. She can't stop talking about it. She was talking about gift wrapping. I mean, like I haven't seen her. It's what she needed. It really was. It was what she needed. She needed an advocate. And, and I do want to encourage you guys. Cause when I first got on um, my, when I became an advocate, I was all about how can I spoil her? And Constance had to kind of have a come to Jesus meeting with me. And it, it really is not about let's get our nails done. Let's get our hair done. Let's, let's right. spend money. Let's go shopping. It really is about learning how to do normal life experiences that they've never been able to do. Right. And the Very things true. that you did with your mom or your grandmom or your auntie or, you know, just hanging out. Um, you don't necessarily have to do an activity, although activities are awesome too. Yeah. You know? But yeah. they, they really, they just want your attention. Now I've had a couple people say, if I'm an advocate, can I also be part of the volunteer force? Well, you are part of the volunteer force, but except for special events where we might need extra hands, the girls don't like to share you with mm -hmm. the other girls. So like when Elizabeth shows up, Daphne wants to know Elizabeth is there for Daphne. She's not there for everyone else. She's there for Daphne. That doesn't mean you can't say hello to the other girls, but you are there and you know that you're very good at that. So that's something else too, guys, when you have your resident, that is your little sister or that's your kind of adopted daughter. I actually call the, the girl who is now, um, gosh, no, she's my resident, but she's been gone forever now. Um, yeah. I call her my goddaughter. I mean, that's how we just refer to each other because, you know, I can't say it's my dream center daughter. So you, you get close. Let me tell you, you get close. Okay. Any other questions? Those are excellent questions. Elizabeth. Okay. I'm back again. Sorry. Sometimes, I mean, I feel, um, is it okay to, I mean, I know it is okay, but sometimes I feel like she wants to always do stuff with me. Like she's constantly like that, but you know, we went hiking, blah, blah, blah. I, and sometimes if, if I establish boundaries and I say, well, I can't do it, that I almost feel badly. Stop but it. But I, huh? Stop it. Yeah. 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 And I mean, that's your heart because you want to do more, but you also have to be able to um, set expectations for yourself and also be intentional. Mm -hmm. Be like, Hey, plan ahead. When you guys meet on the week that you, that you right. guys are, um, when you, when you guys do meet, talk about what you're going to do next time and right. like what hours you can commit to, right. how long you can commit to hanging out with her and be intentional and be like, so what, let's plan out what we're going to do. What are we going to do? That way there, you're not setting up for, you're not setting up somebody for somebody, anything for disappointment. Exactly. For you, to say no. you guys are right. talking about it. You're being, so I tell her saying, in advance, like, doing. yeah, I tell her in advance this, this, this. So, cause she, she, you know, like I went to church with her and then what are you doing for the rest of the day? You know what I mean? So I feel, well, I came to church with you. We went to church and we had a really great time and I, I, you know, she wanted to spend the rest of the day. I, mean, I wasn't, so I feel like I just need to let her know. Okay, yep. That's good. Elizabeth, I, that is a great thing. So Sarah used to do that to me. She'd say, so what are you doing tomorrow? What are you doing tonight? Can, can me and the boys spend the night? Can we, because we were getting so close and I would say, well, Sarah, on our schedule, the next time we're going to meet is at this time. Mm -hmm. And so why don't we plan? Da, 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 da. And it's a lot better than saying, well, you know, I have a life and, but I like how Constance said, you know, and, and it actually has it, I think in the example I gave you all, I'm pretty sure it has it in there, but I will check it. I think it says, and we set our next date to be yeah. next Saturday at two o'clock. I'll pick her up. We're going to go to lunch. Yeah. And have a time, a, a start time and end time. You know, I mean, like if it runs a little bit over, it runs a little bit over, but at least they're already expecting that it's supposed to end at whatever time that you guys set. And you guys remember, again, you're teaching them re-entry. 
Yeah. You are teaching them re-entry in the real world. And, you know, if they have um, a luncheon date with a girlfriend and on a Saturday, and then they've had lunch and they look at their girlfriend and go, well, what are you going to do now? Do you want to hang out some more? That can create awkwardness. So, um, you know, you are teaching them re-entry into the real world. I think that's awesome. Okay, anybody else? Questions? Are we scaring y'all? Does it sound hard? Oh, okay, Shar, does this sound hard to anybody? No, not to me. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so you said about pictures. Can I take pictures of us as long as I'm not posting them because I thought maybe in the future we could have like a little album we could put together or something like that. The answer is yes. Okay. As long as you're not going to like your friends or yeah. somebody else and being like, Hey, you'd yeah. be surprised at how many Johns right. are out there. You know right. what I mean? So are people that have that you may know that have purchased sex before. So we just want to make sure that we're very careful about showing the pictures but if you want to keep them for you guys to look at or make a scrapbook or something that's super awesome and she would love that because yeah. she's just she's yeah, sentimental she like precious. that and y'all there's nothing wrong with with telling your friends or family or whatever oh yeah on saturday mornings i go volunteer at the dream center i'm um i'm an advocate for a resident there that's all you tell them okay <laughs> if they say well how old is she gosh was she a you know they use the P word or the H word, which we do not use. Um, or Just for those of you that don't know, that's prostitute and whore. Those are bad words. They're cuss words. Yeah. It's, yeah. well, whore, yeah, hooker. I was thinking hooker. <laughs> but anyway, so those, we don't call them that. The victims of human trafficking. Or, oh my gosh, was she a drug addict? Or you just say, so let me just tell you this. On Saturday mornings, I volunteer at the Dream Center. And I'm an advocate for a resident. And it's awesome. And if you ever want more information on it, you can take a tour at the Dream Center. Like, we don't talk about it. We just don't. And, you know, we're finding out more and more in today's world that the man up the street married to one of your good friends might be buying something on the street. And I don't want y'all to be suspicious, everybody, but I'm just telling you, you can endanger these girls. You can endanger the Dream Center. You can endanger yourself. If you go out spouting around stuff and, and, you know, so this is a very, this is kind of like what the Bible says. It's praying in silence. It's working in silence and it's not doing it. So people think you're great and awesome and all that. It's because you're serving and you're keeping it um, in silence mm -hmm. and God is going to reward you for that. And you're going to be blessed for that. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense to you guys? Mm -hmm. Am I preaching to the choir? Okay. Mary Helen's clapping. I love that. Okay. Any questions? Chris, you got any questions? Brooke? Okay. I got one more. Sorry. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so, um, I guess I don't really want to, I know we're not supposed to like ask questions about their life or we just want to just, if they feel like they want to share, then they share and that's the extent of it. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. yeah. I mean, like there's times where, I mean, I'm not saying like, don't ask them if they have any brothers or sisters, you know what I mean? But just be, just guard yourself and be prepared that they might tell you like my brother was shot in front of me, you know, like they might tell you something that is going to be shocking to you. And you're going to be like, Oh my gosh. And be like, you know, I'm sorry to hear that. But don't, I mean like, it's what you, it's your, be prepared for what your response is going to be. And not be like, um, when they tell you something and you're like, oh my gosh, just prepare yourself for what your response is going to be when you ask questions. You know, um, I would definitely steer clear of asking any questions of them being in the life. You can ask them, did you have a dog when you were younger? Do you have a brother or sister? You know, how many siblings do you have? You know, you can ask them like normal questions you would ask anybody else. But as far as like, but you wouldn't go up to anybody that incurred trauma or that had been, had sexual violence happen to them and be like, so how did that sexual violence happen? You're not going to ask them that, you know, it's an intrusive question, you know? So, I mean, like asking them stuff about their life and what their dreams are, what they want to do with their life. And, um, if they have any family support, like what family support, family supports around here, where state they from, they're from, I mean, like things like that, that you would normally ask normal people. Oh, they're normal. Foods, like, yeah. Okay. So, um, 
Deb Wright has an excellent question, and I have the answer for it, but Deb, I want to read the question. The question is, when, you got, when we talked about up close and personal, we said don't give out your phone number, but if they want to go to the office and call their advocate, how do they call their advocate if they don't have the phone number? Will the office have the phone number? So, yeah, so I went over that. I kind of went over that. So when I put up the put up, pulled up the slide about the telephone number, I kind of said that like you're you're going to have to give out your telephone number. But I mean, like as far as like I should have gone a little bit further and being like, if you need them to get a hold of you, and if like eventually you guys are working out like and you guys um uh, are further along in your guys' relationship and they're starting to get to know you and your family and um everything's going great, they should never ever and this is what it should have said. They should never ever 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 have your husband or your significant other phone number ever right. that should not happen and if but you that don't want is, them to have your phone number especially in the beginning we will have a list locked up in deborah's desk that she will have the advocate's phone numbers yeah mm -hmm. does that make sense to you deb she just texted it to me so okay that was a good question so and yes we all dial their phone numbers for them yeah it is interesting. Yeah. I've been in the office when they're dialing someone for them. It's like, yep. We have a Rolodex in the office of all their approved contacts because all their contacts have to be approved in order for them to make phone calls to people. Um, just because we don't want them calling people they should not be. So we have it all on there and then we just go to their name in the Rolodex and we're like, which person do you want to call? They don't even give us the number because we already have it. And we just dial the phone number for them and hand them the phone. They come to us for accountability and security and, um, and safety. So, I mean, like if like they're coming there for all of the, for, um, all of those things, we have to give them all of those things. Mm -hmm. And it's not saying that we shouldn't trust them or they're untrustworthy or they're asking for this life change. They know what our program is about. They know what our program, they know all the rules in the program. And if we're not enforcing those rules, then we're defeating the purpose of why they came there in the first place. Yeah. Okay, one of the papers that I sent you guys is actually a volunteer job description of what is an advocate. So if you're looking at that, you know, you can look over that. It, it's really, you know, it's in legalese a little bit, but basically, you know, we're, we're asking you to do exactly what you said tonight, to walk alongside them and to just love on them and be consistent if if it if this is something that you're like oh i just don't know if i have that kind of time or that energy take take some energy um then let's plug you in somewhere else this is not for everyone and we don't want to put any pressure on any of you because this is not for everyone but i know like natalie came for shadowing and she's like i'm ready i want to be an advocate let's do it i'm ready like She's like, give me a girl. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Some people just know that they know that they know. This is what they want to do. Yeah. It's very true. It's fun. And it is so rewarding. You guys, I have gotten so much out of my relationship with Sarah. I mean, her boys are turning three. They turned three yesterday. I took them to dinner. And, um, well, she was there too. And Sunday <laughs> we're having like their whole three-year-old birthday party and I've had to use some tough love with her and I've had to be her mom and and we've had we've had a couple of arguments let me tell you we have had a couple of arguments because the closer you get the more you just want to shake them or even kill them and tell God they died I mean just like any other one of your kids or your best friends or your little sister sometimes you just want to go what are you thinking and yeah. so you're gonna be human you are going to be human. And if they get mad at you or you maybe you discuss something and y'all weren't in agreement, put that in your report so we're made aware of it. Bold it, outline it, whatever. So somebody had asked, do you email or do you text? Okay, you email me the um, visiting report. That's what you email me. Everything else, do it through text. Just do it through text because I can respond fast. It's easy. You get your answer. It's easy for me to copy a text, send it to Jay Sean and say, Char's going to be there um, Friday at two instead of Friday at three. Is that good? Yes, that's good. I sent it back to you. She said it's good. Bam. Okay. Any other questions? We kind of covered everything we were going to cover with the advocates afterwards. So I think we're good to go. Um, you guys questions. have been awesome. And oh, Maddie, did you have a question? 
Yeah. A couple people have questions. Um, so I was just wondering, after the training, what's the next step? In Good the question. You win the prize for the night. Okay. So now your next step is once all your paperwork is in, okay, and everything's approved, you do your three shadows. See, like Elizabeth's already done that. Char's already done that. A lot of them have already done that. Okay. You do your three shadows. When you're doing those shadows, you're kind of checking them out. You're talking with the girls. You're seeing, is there somebody you click with? Be very careful, though, about when you're there. Try not to say, I'm trying to decide who I want to be an advocate for. You know, that's like going into a singles, you know, Christian singles club and saying, yeah, I'm looking for a date. Well, no, no, we don't want to do that. Um, some of the girls will already have advocates. We will, I will steer you in the direction of the girls that don't have advocates that I think you might make a good match with. And so far, we've been on the money. I mean, completely on the money with this. Um, Maddie, how old are you? I'm 20. Okay. So we've got a couple of girls who are younger, mm -hmm. but I will tell you that um, one of our girls, you would never know it by looking at her, but she's in her early 30s. You would think she's in her early 20s. Her mm -hmm. advocate is actually 25, but they, they just make a great team. So it doesn't have to be someone your age or younger. It can mm -hmm. be someone older, but we'll just kind of see... There has to be a chemistry there. Yeah, definitely. And you'll come and you'll talk with the girls. You'll sit in class with them. And you're just, you, you're kind of looking, you know, they don't know that you're looking there to figure out who you might have a, have a, you know, kind of chemistry with. But it's amazing how it works. It just works. It does. It's fun. Okay. Anybody else? I saw another hand. Okay. I still do not know who is the girl with the long dark hair parted on the side in the gray and black t-shirt. It says iPhone 2. Is it Stephanie? Yes. Okay. So your phone number came up and then now you have your video. Thank you, Stephanie. Yay. I, I, was, th I was thinking while you were talking, Constance, maybe that's Stephanie. Okay. Very good. Okay. So what I would love for each one of you guys to do is um, just sometime in the next 24 hours, shoot me an email. Now that I just said only use text, shoot me an email and let's just make sure we're, we're on, we have your paperwork in, everything's good to go. If you know you have your paperwork in, you know you've done your shadows, then let's get you plugged in. If you still got stuff to do, if you still got paperwork, all that, then let's figure that out too. And I'm not going to take up everybody's time on the recording to look you up. So if you're not sure, just send me a quick email. It's jshite at phxdreamcenter.org. It's the email you get tons of emails from. And um, <laughs> I, I do want to just tell you guys, um, just as a side note, if I don't personally call you, if I'm emailing and texting and all that, I also run a very, very, very large half million dollar business out of my home. And I am the parent to an 83 year old child that's called my father. So if I don't get the chance to actually do this and talk to you, it, please don't take offense to that. I'm trying to get this done. I'm very efficient and I'm very organized. So I would rather get it done than to say, hey, how's it going? I love you, all that. So just, just know it right now and just, Get over it. Okay. Constance will hug you. Yeah. She's our hugger. I love hugs. I love giving hugs. I don't like receiving them. I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> you do know it's the same action. I know. It's just weird. Okay. If I know and that I'm the one that's receiving it because like I need it, then okay. it just makes me feel now weird. She's just going to start rambling because she's tired. Brooke, did you have a question? Oh, okay. Wait, I thought Maddie raised her hand. Maddie, did you raise your hand? She did. She just asked the question. Oh, I missed that. I'm sorry. My phone rang. Okay. Um, Brooke, unmute yourself. Hi. Hey, how old are you? 35. Oh my gosh. I thought you were going to say like 18 or 19. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> okay. Wait, I see who it is. All right. Good to know. Good to know. Okay. We have all these children. I'm like, oh. they say as you get older, people look younger. Okay, Sherry, no questions? You're good? You're I'm good? good? Okay. And um, Natalie, you're good? I'm good. You're good. Mary Helen, you're good? 
Yes, ma'am. Okay. Deborah, everybody, Elizabeth, I know you always have a million questions. I'm you're good. So awesome. Okay. Brooke and Chris. Chris, you're so cute. I like you. Okay. Felicia, do you have any questions? Are you are you done eating or whatever you were doing? Oh no, Brooke was eating. I was eating. Yeah. Felicia, do you have any questions? No, I'm good. Okay. Um, and Felicia, I need to talk to you about something later anyway. Okay. Okay. All right. So I think we're good to go. If you guys have any questions, text me, email me, call me, but please make me, me be the first person. I have no problem sending it on to Constance if I can't answer it. I do not have an ego. I will say I don't know. Let me find out. Um, but definitely use me as your first contact. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. You guys have an amazing evening. Thank you. And God bless.